So if you want to use Qs in UiPath Orchestrator, there are three things that we need to understand in order for us to be able to use them correctly. The first thing is, what are the benefits of these queues? Why do we even need them in the first place? The second thing is how to load data into these queues and create a dispatcher. And then the third and last thing is how we can take data out of a queue and then process it inside of our UiPath process. So today we are going to see all of these concepts and we are going to explain them in a really short and simple process. Let's jump right in. So what are even queues in the first place? I want you to think of queues much like a line that we have in a bank or a grocery store or a bakery. And everyone in that queue is waiting their turn to be served. Of course, the first person to come to the line is the one to be served and people in the back are going to be waiting for their turn. So much like that, we have queues inside a few iPads and all of these items are part of the queue and they have all data inside of them. So much like a person in a line of grocery stores have different items, every line that we have in here is going to have different data or sometimes even the same data inside of it. So that's basically it. It's a collection of items that we have inside of few iPads and it is so useful because it has so many benefits. So by far, the biggest benefit is scalability. Once you have queues inside of your iPad uh, orchestrator, a lot of machines can access the queue at the same time and you don't have to manage it yourself through cloud or through uh, a shared uh, resource. It's basically here and every machine can come here, take the queue item and start working on it in your process. So you don't have to manage anything and we can use status to be sure that not the same transaction item is being used by two different machines at the same time. The second thing is priority. If you have some data, for example, let's say you are working in a, in a process in a bank and you have some clients that you want to prioritize, you can do that using the priority or the deadline or other tools that we have in here. So that helps us basically make sure prioritizing what's the most crucial in our process. And there are so many other features like logging, for example, it's so much easier to log your data. Another big benefit is KPIs. So you can know exactly how many transactions have been successful and how many transactions have failed. So that makes your life so much easier when it comes to providing data to the higher ups if they want to know exactly how efficient your processes are. And of course, we have other benefits like error handling. So the benefits are so many and we basically can't count them all. But using queues is going to make your life so much easier in terms of handling data and handling transactions in your processes. So now let's go ahead and actually start having some fun. So uh, here we have a sequence that we are going to create. Let's call it queue loading, for example, even though the, the name, uh, generally speaking, is dispatcher, but let's just call it queue loading. And here we are going to work with the RPA Challenge website, just to make things simple. So we're going to go here, we're going to download the Excel, and then we are going to basically place our uh, Excel sheet inside of the, the queue uh, project that I have created, just to make things simpler. So here I have a challenge that Excel sheet, and I want to load all of this data to the queue, basically, that I am going to create. So this is the, the, the data that I want to create. Every row in here, I want it to be a queue item. So I want to create 10 queue items that I want to uh, load to my queue that I will uh, create. So to create a queue, it's very simple. You go to cloud.uipad.com. Let's go from the beginning. And then from here, you go to orchestrator. Then I'm going to say uh, my workspace to make things simpler. Then we're going to go to queues and then we're going to create an add queue and then we're going to create a new queue. Let's call it challenge, for example. And of course, there are a lot of things in here. We can, uh, we can enforce some, uh, some specific schema, for example, or we can make some fields respect a certain format. For example, if we want to uh, enforce a certain format on a field like emails or a number or uh, a string, etc. So... We can do that using all of these things, but we're not going to do that today since we want to keep things simple. So let's click on add. And uh, of course, here I have the challenge that has been created. Now I am going to go back to my UiPath process. And here I will read range activity, read range workbook activity. I will use it. 
Then I will choose the challenge.excel. The sheet is going to be sheet one. This is the sheet inside of uh, challenge.excel, sheet one. So here I am going to read it and then I am going to put it inside a data table. So I'm going to create DT challenge. I'm going to name it DT challenge. And then from here, I am going to use the bulk add queue items. So this activity will actually help me add all of my queue items directly to the queue without the need for a loop. So I can add all of my data directly here. I'm going to choose my folder path. Then I will choose the queue challenge. And now I am going to add the DT challenge. Basically, I wanted to show you that the queue is empty. View transactions. So oh yeah, the queue is empty. And now I will debug the process. And it's going to finish very quickly. And as you can see here, if I click on refresh, the queue is going to be uh, filled with the data that I have. And if I click here, for example, view details, as you can see, this is the data and this is going to be the first line that I have in here. So next time that I will uh, process the transaction, this is going to be the first transaction that's going to be uh, treated. Okay, so now I have uh, basically my process, my dispatcher, which is two activities. It is very easy to create a dispatcher. But now I can go and create a process that will take the data that we have in here and add it to the fields that we have and click on submit, basically an RPA challenge process. But instead of using an Excel sheet, we can use queues. So I already created a process before uh, in one of my videos where I have shown how to complete the RPA challenge. I've actually made three videos about it. So we're not going to repeat that. We are going to take that process and instead of using an Excel sheet, we're going to use the queue items that we have. So first of all, we are going to delete the read range activity from the process that we have. And we're going to use the get transaction or get queue items. And in the get queue items, we are going to choose the folder where from where we want to get the queue items. Then we are going to choose the queue uh, name. And good. So now I will uh, go to properties. And from here, I will go to properties and I will make sure that I am getting the new transaction items because you don't want your process to take other queue items in progress or failed or successful. We want to make sure that we only get in the new transaction items, which are transaction items that are not being used by other processes. So this is how you make sure that everything is separate and every process is working on different transaction items. So here in the outputs, I will define the queue items that I have. So control K and I will basically choose a name for my queue items. So I will name them queue items. Good. Now I am going to expand my use uh, browser edge. I'm not going to touch that. I am not going to touch the click on start since it ha only happens once. And instead of for each row in data table, instead of going through the data table that we have in an Excel sheet, we are going to use a for each activity. So a normal for each activity in under control. And the list of items is going to be the queue items, of course. And then here we are going to name it queue item instead of current item, just to keep the consistency. And now I am going to take everything that I have inside of this process. I will copy it and then I will paste it inside of the other body. So let me just copy this. And then I will grab it and put it in here. So now we are going through the queue item instead of the data table. I can delete this and of course I will get an error. Okay, so now we are not using the current row that we had used in the other activity for each row. We are going to use queue item. And the first thing that we need to do is get transaction item, which is an activity that will change the status 
of this uh, queue items from new to in progress. So this way we make sure that this, for example, transaction item is going to change to in progress. So if another machine is working, it's not going to work on this specific transaction item. Okay, so here I will choose, of course, the queue item, then the challenge, and then I will get the transaction item and put it inside of this queue item. It's going to be the same thing anyways. So the output is going to be get queue item. That's good. And now from here, instead of using the current row, we are going to use the queue item dot specific content. So this is very important. We are going to use the uh, function specific content with first name, just to make sure that it's basically is going to, uh, to uh, get the first name from the transaction item. So if you go back here and click on the three dots, and click on view details. We want to get the first name in here and basically type that first name inside of the attributes first name that we have here. Good. So now we have first name. I am going to do the same thing on the other attributes and I am going to fast forward the, the video for it. Okay, now I'm finished. The only thing I have left is to use the activity sit transaction status. at the end to successful queue item i need to set the transaction status to successful because this means that my uh, transaction was successful if there was an error i have to set it as failed and i can only do that using the try catch which is basically error handling now we're doing error handling not, not only queue items so I am going to place everything inside of the try catch. And if there is, if there is an error inside of my try catch, it's say system that exception, whatever exception, I am going to use the set transaction status and i am going to choose the, the queue item of course and i'm going to choose failed because that means i had an error inside of the try and then i will go into the catch and uh, it failed and uh, i am going to set the status as failed of course when i set the status as failed i have to give a reason so here i will just exception dot message as the reason that's good. So now I basically have a, a finished process. Let's launch the process and see what's going to happen. Let's first close the RPA challenge browser. Let's run the process now and see what's going to happen. Of course, it's working and it's going to finish very quickly. So, uh, so yeah, that's basically it. We just been able to understand queues, load queues, and get queues from orchestrator, and then we can use them inside of our processes. So now you have a basic understanding of queues and how you can work with them. Of course, there are other things like priority, like SLAs, like uh, using them in insights. This is basically another topic for another day. But now you have a basic understanding for queues, so you can basically use them and incorporate them inside of your projects. So that has been me. Thank you guys for watching, and catch you guys on next time. Peace.